What's up guys, Damien here, 1, 2, and 2 here. Today I got a little video for you about the best cards in the new upcoming uh, Millennium set that comes out Friday. So let's get started. Number 13. Symbol of Friendship. Alright, this is a really weird card. Basically, if you draw it for your normal draw phase, you can... <laughs> and your opponent has three or more monsters and you control none, you can reveal it during your main phase, and then add one card from your deck to your hand. That's really great. Like, it lets you essentially do the heart of the cards thing. To get the last piece of Exodia, because it's got the, you know, it's got the, the symbol of friendship, and the smiley, and they put their hands in the guy. It's like the first episode, when Yugi draws the last piece of Exodia. That's what the card is supposed to be. He uses his friendship to get the last card. That's what it is. Now, there is an error with the card. In the Japanese version, it says, well, you control no cards. This one says, well, you control no monsters. So, in the TCG, the card is a little bit better, because you can still have back row and the card actually work. Um, <clears throat> the way that I think the card was supposed to be played is that your opponent has three blue eyes, white dragon. You have no monsters, no traps or spells. This is your top deck into this thing. You just need the last piece of Exodia. They're trying to set up that scene from the, the, the first episode of the show. So, I don't know how it's going to be ruled, so we put it at 13. Number 12. Curse of Dragonfire. This is a really cool card. It's basically a retrain of Curse of Dragon with 2,000 attack, 1,500 defense, and when it is normal or special summoned, you can destroy one field card on the field. Obviously, you'd use this in something like, I don't know, Cosmos or something, so you get some advantage from killing a field spell, or getting out of something like Domain, for instance. And then, if that's, so that's kind of neat, I guess, and uh, it's the Burning Land effect because Yu-Gi-Oh! is used to kill field spells with this thing. And then, uh, its other effect is you can force the fusion summon of a monster that requires this thing as a part of it, like, or just a regular dragon. So that, that's kind of cool, I guess. Eleven. Sky Galloping Gaia the Dragon Champion. This is thing, the thing that you'd probably be summoning with the Curse of Dragonfire, because it requires one dragon monster and one Gaia the Fierce Knight monster, which means it's kind of generic. You would, you would use Curse of Dragonfire. Basically what this guy does is he becomes Guy the Dragon Champion while on board, uh, and once per turn you can search your Spiral Spear Strike, which is a, a, a continuous spell that lets Guy the Dragon Champion do piercing damage and then draw a card, I think, when he does battle damage to an opponent's light points. So that kinda, that's kind of cool, that lets you kind of set up that little move, and when he declares an attack you can change the battle position of a monster that he's attacking so that you can get them in the weaker position so that you can do more damage. That, it's, it's a neat card, I guess. Number 10. Wing Dragon of Ra, Immortal Phoenix. This is basically the last form of Ra that we needed so that Merrick's deck can actually be built, which is really kind of cool, and what does it do? It can't be normal summoned or set, which means uh, you, you gotta special summon it, and it can only be special summoned by its own effect, which is kind of weird. But anyway, if the card's in the graveyard and a Wing Dragon of Ra is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon this thing from your graveyard. Uh, it has 4,000 attack, 4,000 defense, and you can pay 1,000 life points to send one monster from the field to the graveyard. It doesn't destroy which is kind of cool, and from the language of the text, it apparently doesn't target either, so that's actually really kind of good. Like, the, um, sending stuff to the graveyard isn't the best thing in the world, but because it doesn't target means you can get around things like Dark Destroyer, even though it, it has 4k attack anyway. Um, and then, when this thing is sent from the field of the graveyard, you can special summon a raw sphere mode, so you can get this little kind of loop-de-doop-de-doo thing going, so that's kind of cool. Number 9. Rebellion, a quick play spell that lets you, during your either player's battle phase, target one monster your opponent controls and take control of that monster. You can use this to block an attack or grab their biggest dude in an attempt to, you know, finish their life points off or whatever, but the only problem is it's, it, the card is returned to them at the end of the battle phase, which means there's limited use for what you can actually do it for, unless maybe you're playing Merlin or something and you can synchro with it during the battle phase if you can like get off a special summon using the card during the battle phase I don't know uh, Maybe the monarchs can they do that? I don't remember um, get, Like tribute it during the battle phase or something like that. I don't know uh, if you could do that <laughs> Then that's kind of cool. Maybe cosmos could do it uh, To use like a dark destroyer in the middle of the battle phase to pop it so it doesn't go back to your opponent stuff like that So there's interesting uses for the card and it'll be interesting to see what people actually do with the thing Number eight, Holding Arms. This is a neat little monster, another Merrick card, uh, something kind of neat. Basically, when it's a normal or special summon, you can target one monster, its effects are negated, and it cannot attack. And as long as that monster is on the field, this thing can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Um, it's a, like a mini uh, giant hand fiendish chain kind of thing. It's a neat little card. Number seven, 
Holding legs. This is the one that people actually care about. It's a little bit better than holding arms, and basically when it is summoned, uh, which is weird that the other one specifies normal or special summon, this one is just summoned, meaning this one also gets effect when it is flip summoned. I guess that means it's technically a little bit better. But anyway, um, you can return all set spell or traps on the field to the owner's hand. So it's a little bit of a mini giant true nade, which is kind of cool. And you can banish this card um, from your graveyard to target one set spell or trap your opponent has, and that thing can't be activated uh, until the end of your opponent's next turn. So it's kind of like that fire formation Gaioku or whatever, or uh, Zing Zang Hu. So that's kind of a cool little effect. Um, some people will probably play this. I can see this being in a deck that's kind of like Hat or something, where it's like a, a, a mush or jumble of little engines to make like a, a techie combo deck. This is something that you could probably play in a deck like that. Interesting little card, and I'll be interested to see what people do with it again. Number six. Dark Paladin. <laughs> Not all the new ones are on this list. I love Dark Paladin. It's a really, really good card, and it's actually a really solid reprint to have with the Dark Magician stuff coming out very soon, because I don't know when last time Dark Paladin got a print. If it was Magician Force, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> um, so this is really nice to actually have in our arsenal, you know, just get this card back in circulation so people can actually have it. I think it's a common, that's kind of lame. But anyway, basically you make this thing with a Dark Magician and a Buster Blader, if that's even how you summon it, and then uh, you probably won't. Um, and when your opponent activates a spell card, you can discard a card from your hand and negate it, which he's a basically a walking magic jammer which is really 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 powerful like even still this thing's effect is really good and at 2900 attack this is still a formidable monster and the dark magician deck can make it pretty reliably with eye of Tamias. number five trap hole of spikes oh this is an interesting one basically when a monster declares an attack that was normal or special summon this turn you can destroy that attacking monster and then deal burn damage to your opponent equal to half the attack Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, the interesting, obvious synergy with this card would be with uh, Trap Tricks Reflasia, which kind of turns her into having a battle trap effect, which is kind of neat, especially if your opponent can figure out a way to get over her. Um, then you can just be like, ah, Trap Hole will spike, yeah! And that, so that's kind of cool. Um, I'm not exactly sure why you would run this thing over like Treacherous Trap Hole or Bottomless Trap Hole, because that would be, be better removal and more reliable anyway, but it's another option for Reflasia and Trap Tricks decks in general. Number four. Left Arm Offering. <laughs> Here's another little Heart of the Cards kind of card coming out in this classic set. Um, it's very interesting. I kind of like it. It's a little weird, but yeah. If you have two or more other cards, not counting this one, in your hand, you can banish your entire hand and then search one spell from your deck to your hand. It's a generic search for spell cards. That is so awesome. We finally actually get this kind of card. We, we needed this thing because there are certain cards in this game that are unsearchable and they're required for decks to play, like Black Whirlwind, which isn't very easy for Black Wings to get at, and they kind of need it to play, so this is a good card for something like that. Obviously, the banish your entire hand thing is kind of a problem, but something like Cosmos, for instance, really wouldn't care. They just get it all back if all they had was monsters, so that's kind of neat. Hell, you could search Cosmotown with this thing and get back the monsters you banished. Like, uh, uh, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, so, like, there's decks that could play this thing that they have and that banish thing not be a problem and then basically it says if you you can't set spell or traps a turn that you use it so you can't search like a quick play spell and set it if it's a, like a mass change or something but generally i think you're going to be searching normal or continuous spells that just don't have any good way of grabbing them like regeki for instance to get out of a jam so this is kind of a really fun card and i'm interested again for like the fifth time this list to see what people do with it number three the true name every card in this in this list are a bunch of heart of the cards cards basically and what this thing does is declare a card name and excavate the top card of your deck if it is that card you can either add it to your hand or summon a god card from your deck you get the option um if not you just discard the card to the graveyard okay this is kind of neat uh sylvans or something could run this because they just you know stack their little deck or if you're running like plague spreader or zombie you could do that like a some weird plague spreader god card deck could be kind of fun, <laughs> but uh, again, it's another heart of the cards card that, again, will be really cool to see what people do with. Number two, Crush Card Virus, another classic card that we're getting in this set that's actually a really solid reprint. Um, Konami just put this thing to three on the last ban list, uh, clearly on purpose because it was getting reprint in the set, and I guess they were trying to sell the set, I guess because <laughs> um, there isn't much in the set other than a bunch of nostalgia cards that people would, could just want for nostalgia reasons but it is a decent card even with its errata and it's the original artwork from like the YCS prize card version so 
that's really cool. So yeah, Crush Card Virus. Way to go, Konami. Thanks for giving this in a common because it, I think it actually was a little expensive for what it was. Number one. Card of Demise. Probably the best card in the set, and that's probably why I put it at number one. Basically what this thing does is you draw until you have three cards in your hand. That's pretty good. And then for the rest of the turn, you can't special summon and your opponent takes no damage. And then during your end phase, you need to discard whatever was left in your hand. So it's a generic draw card, which is really cool. And a deck that's playing this card does not care about the discard. And it's not even a cost, so Dark Worlds can troll you during the end phase with this thing. And, um, you know, just getting to three cards is great. Like, if you just get three spells or traps, you just set them and not have to worry about the discard. So I think this is actually going to be a pretty useful, nifty little draw card. Anyway, guys, let me know down in the comments below about the cards I picked for this list. Um, I'm pretty sure these just ended up being all the new ones. Because <laughs> all the old cards are either bad or nostalgic and bad. So it's not the greatest set in the world. It's very cool and look cool for box openings, but... Uh, it's probably going to be a pretty lower value set, I would think. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the matter who will, I'll see you guys next time. Scar, all this is just stupid shit, whatever. Um, but the next one of note is this Cosmic Cyclone.